Hello everybody, James here from SLC. The N15 Scotchman add-on has now been released and is available from the SLC website. Big thank you to everyone who's purchased the add-on so far. In this video, I'll be showing you how to add a locomotive to a scenario and how to use the dynamic number list. For our example, I've created a free roam scenario on the London to Brighton route, but what we're going to look at is applicable to any scenario and to any route. The first thing we need to do is activate the add-on for this scenario. At the moment, the game isn't loading the Scotchman add-on files, it's effectively ignoring them. So what we want to do is tell the game to load those files and make them visible. To do that, in the scenario editor, in the middle pullout, we want to click on this little blue cube with an orange triangle by the side of it. If we click on that, that will bring up the object set filter. And if we pin that out, it'll stay there. If we click on the arrow, we'll see a list of all of the developer folders that we've got in, in our train simulator install. What we want to do is scroll down until we find Monsel era and click on it. Now what we'll see is a list of the products or the add-ons that are within that developer folder. Now obviously the, the amount of add-ons that appear in this uh, view will vary depending on how many SLC add-ons you've got installed. The one we're interested in though is N15 King Arthur and if we click on the little uh, box in the middle, one with the train underneath it, if we click on that, that will now load in all of the Scotchman files, all of the files within the Scotchman add-on folder. But that's not the only folder that we need to activate. If we go back to our developer folder, we want to click on the Kuji folder. And within that, we then want to click on the Rail Simulator folder. And this may take a bit of time to load in. What the Rail Simulator folder uh, does is it holds the crew and the AWS sounds. If you don't enable this folder, the crew won't be visible and the AWS sounds just won't work. If you don't see this folder, uh, the chances are that you've probably not got the European Loco and Asset Pack installed. If you don't know what that is, then you can just do a search on Steam and you'll find it. The next step is to choose which locomotive livery and modifications we want. To do that, we'll make use of a PDF document which is contained in the Manuals folder of our Train Simulator 2016 install. Under the EN folder, you'll find a folder called SLC. Double click on that, and then N15 Scotchman. The document we're interested in is entitled SLC N15 Dynamic Numbering List Scotchman V1.pdf. If we open that up, you'll see all the information that we need to have an accurate locomotive and tender for the time period we want. If it all seems a little confusing, don't worry, I'll explain how it all works. The first column contains the locomotive number. The second column is the time period which is suitable for that row. The third column is the name of the locomotive model. Fourth is the locomotive code, and this is the most important one, as this is the number you'll actually be assigning to the locomotive. In the fifth column, you'll see the name of the tender model. While no number is given here, you'll want to make sure that it's the same three-digit number that you enter for the locomotive. Otherwise, you'll end up with one number on the tender and one number on the engine, which just looks wrong. Finally, the sixth column, for some locomotives, may contain some additional information. So to find out which locomotive and tender models to use, we need to decide if we want a specific locomotive at a certain time period, or just a particular livery. For our example, let's say that I've decided to set my scenario in the late 1940s. If I'm after a livery, I can just look through the list and choose a locomotive that carried that livery. Or, if I'm after an individual locomotive, I just look through the list until I find the time period I'm interested in. For our example, I'm interested in number 768, Sabalan. 
and as the time period I've chosen is the 1940s, I'm going to pick the time period October 1948 to June 1951. Looking at the third column, the locomotive model we need is SLC N15 mode Scotchman BR Malachite Gill Sands number plate. The mode simply refers to the advanced or the simple models, but as of version 1, only the advanced models are included. So back in the game, we now want to choose that model. So we'll look through the list until we find the Mal BR Malachite Gill Sands model and we'll put it into the game. Now it will automatically choose uh, a random number from a preset list. And while this is great, it probably isn't the engine that we want. And in this case it hasn't, it's actually chosen number 791. So to solve that problem, what we can do is go back to our PDF list and we want to copy the 26 digit code, which you could enter manually, but it's easier to copy it. And then we want to double click on the engine, select the number list, control A, and then control V to paste our new selection in. Press enter. And if we look at the beginning, we will see that we've actually got number 768, but nothing's happened. Is that what's gone wrong? Don't worry. The way the scripting works, it will only apply the changes when we actually put the engine into the game, when we're actually playing the game. So now we just repeat the process with the tender. We go back to our PDF document and we look to see what tender we need. And in this instance, we need the SLC N15 URI 5000 BR Malachite Gill Sands Type B tender. So what we do is we search through the list. It may take a while to, to find it as there are a number of tenders. And then we'll put it into the game, spin it round and couple it up to the engine. So now we need to go and double click on the tender and in the number we want to enter number 768 because that's the engine that we've selected. Now the number will change here uh, simply because the tender makes use of the dynamic numbering that's built into the game. So all we need to do now is add a driver icon to our train, save the changes and press the play button. What we'll see now is that in the game indeed the changes have been made. We now have number 768 and all of the necessary uh, modifications that are mentioned in the, in the dynamic code have now been applied to the locomotive. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do to get a locomotive uh, into the game using the provided dynamic number list. Hope you all found that useful and I hope to see you all very soon.